I heard a discussion talking about if Christ is the face of God, what a benevolent face. Oft times, our view of God is a deistic one. It actually is a descendant of the, the belief of Zeus standing off on the mountain, thunder and lightning in one hand, justice in, in his eyes. But that's not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible shows up in the person of Christ. Do you view God as Christ? Where he's here to give sight to the blind, heal the sick, care for the needy, wrap his arms around the leper, sit across the table with sinners. That's a benevolent face. Even Genesis chapter 1, do you read Genesis chapter 1 as a view of God? And he looked at everything and said, that's good. He didn't say, perfect. He says, but that's good. Do we have the same view of that? Do we look at the world and say, that's good? In our relationship with God, how we interact with him is completely based on how we view him. If we view God as a vengeful or unjust deity, we will act that way. If you see him as cruel, you will view the world that way. If we see God as a loving, tender, forgiving, unselfish God, we will slowly imitate that. I ask at the beginning, how would you rate your Christianity? In your living out your Christianity, do you doubt that God is good in everything? God is good. Do you live a life where God is good in your day-to-day -day operation? Do you look at the mirror and say, God is good? Do you look out your window and say, God is good? If you think and believe that God is good, then he has to be doing things for a purpose. If he's good, he's not going to let chaos reign. If he's good, there must be a purpose. No matter how it looks to us, there has to be a purpose. So if God is good, we have to wait to a final conclusion to understand his purpose. The problem is we don't always get to see it. Life is tough. Oft times we then say, well, we must be just chess pieces to be tossed about. No, he says that all things work together for good to the love God. I, I think the beauty of heaven is going to be able to sit down and say, okay, God, just show me. Okay, this thing, this situation I was in, all right, what good was flat tire on a Monday? And I think he's going to go, let me show you something. And walk you through it. Do you realize that it took 800 years, do the math, 600 years for the Amalekites to Saul, another 500 years Saul to Esther? Esther is sitting there going, I have no idea what's going on here much. What am, I, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to live in this situation? But we have to understand that the only reason that Esther could play a part is because she just lost everything. She's only now in the room with the king because everything had been taken. It's hard to be a big player or a big role in God's story by refusing to live the life that he has you living. So do we want to accept this position that God has put us in? Or are we going to fight and kick and scream against God and say, how dare you?